Are, are you lads ready to go on stream? I'm ready. Yep. See. Okay, then I'll move you on stream. And, uh... Give me a countdown whenever you lads are good to go. Alright. Uh, you guys ready? Yeah. Um... I guess we can introduce ourselves first. Um, first of all, I'm Superviber K302. Uh, and I'm How to Cantaloupe. And uh, we got a great race coming up for you. Yep. Alright. So, so I'll just count down from three and we go on go. Three. Sure. Okay. Th okay. Three, two, one, go. Good luck. Good luck. luck. Alright, here we go. So SMG2, any percent? Entails collecting 70 stars in order to unlock the final Bowser level, which is Bowser's Galaxy Generator. And from there, you also get a star. So, the total ends up being 71 stars. Um, you're in for a treat. Um, we have like a two and a half minute intro sequence to start us off with. And I'm using, we're going to be using long jumps here because long jumps are the fastest form of movement without special upgrades. And now we're going to get the Sluma. And... This Luma is going to give us the ability to spin, which will give us the ability to do just about everything in this game. Right, so, and we got the first trick of the run coming up here. Um, I'm going to see if we get this. Right, so what I just did there, and I don't know if Cantaloupe got it, yeah, but got it too. it's something called a... Yeah, it's something called a slope boost, where if you have a high amount of speed and then you land on a slope and jump, as soon as you land, you can get a nice little boost. Unlike Galaxy 1, you actually can't climb up slopes in this game, but you can get those little boosts, and they can save some time every now and then. So you just got a bunch of A mashing here. Now, the text boxes you get here in the intro are different from the text boxes for the rest of the game. Here you just yeah. press A to go through a text box, but later on mm -hmm. we're going to need to hold A for the text box and then press A again at the end. Yeah. And there's also a text skip coming up here that I think Cantaloupe and analyzed and figured out. It involves slow it involves being slow on the first okay, on the second set of text boxes after we enter this cutscene. Um, there's a set of four text boxes that you can skip the fourth one by being slow on the first two and getting the third one frame perfect. So we'll see if one of us gets it. I'm not really going to go for it. I did I, not get it. I didn't get either. Yeah. It saves like half a second. So we're done with that. Um, and now we're going to head straight to the first level of the game. Uh, Sky Station 1. And... This is where things really start to pick up. Uh, there's a lot of flashy movement and flashy strats starting here from now. So here we're going to be standing still after this Luma text box because if we stand still between that and the cutscene, then the cutscene ends like half a second earlier for whatever reason. Okay, something I need to talk about right now is this. Um, you just saw the camera kind of twitch there. That's a landing animation cancel, where we go into first-person mode as soon as we land from a launch start and then exit it immediately, and this cancels the landing animation. It saves, like, a second each time you do it. Oh, another thing. Uh, uh. Okay, that was kind of slow, but <laughs> what I just did there was a strat called Luma Bounce. Um, it saves, like, one second if you get it, and it is kind of difficult, but... It, it can save a little bit. I kind of didn't, I didn't get it optimally. Optimally, you'll land on the planet where the launch star is and not the sling star. But at least I didn't die to it. Yeah, and I'm not going for it in this run because it saves so little time and I want to be safe. Yeah. It's a, it is a really difficult strat. It's easy to die to. But yeah, backwards momentum in this game does give you slightly more momentum than forwards momentum. So stuff like that can be abused throughout the entire run. 
Alright, so this is the first boss fight. This is Peewee Piranha. Uh, you're supposed to spin into shell like two or three times, but we're speedrunners, so we're just gonna ground pound that shell once and that shatters the entire thing. And ironically, the second hit is actually easier to get than the first because he runs away slower on the second hit. On the first hit, sometimes we have to hit him with the star bit just to be able to catch him. Oh, I did not split for the first star. I'm smart. <laughs> okay. So... Also, another thing about this game is if you look in the lower right-hand corner, uh, you see an individual IL time after every star, and that's useful if you ever need to, um, you know, grind IL attempt or something, or if you're practicing. So now we just kind of have a bunch of text. It might look simple, but it is actually very difficult to get a good rhythm for these text boxes. Sometimes a single mess up can just throw you off. And now that purple Luma, Leva, is going to use the power of this star to transform this, whatever this is, into Starship Mario, which is kind of the hub world of the game. Unfortunately, we're not going to be doing a whole lot of exploring here because we just want to get to the helm to take us to this Super Mario Bros. 3S world map. And right here, I'm going to hold down and because it makes Mario face the camera, and we can just do a backflip straight to the helm. That's like the only spot in the game where that works. Yeah, during after every star, uh, sometimes... Lubba, the purple guy, will want to talk to you um, and tell you stuff after the star. And if that happens, Mario starts out facing up. And if he doesn't talk to you, Mario starts off facing down. So if he's not talking, to the... yeah. So if he's not Sorry. talking to us, uh, we'll do a backflip. And if he does talk to us, we'll just run straight up because we're already facing. Or up. and what I do is I actually turn Mario around and then backflip. Uh, you can do that too. Yeah. So now we're doing uh, Sky Station Two. This level isn't nearly as flashy as Sky Station 1, in my opinion, but it's still pretty cool. Well, still a lot of really technical stuff going down. This first chomp cycle can be really hard to make. Ah, I didn't make the chomp cycle. Yeah, you can make that a cycle earlier than what I did. But it is kind of tight. You have to have a really good long jump. Unfortunately, the standstill to end a cutscene earlier trick does not work anywhere else in the game, as far as we know. In this second planet, you, we do kind of have to make sure that okay, I already messed up, so that's bad. Because this planet's very cycle-based, and oh, okay. making one mistake can lead to a, a tremendous amount of time loss. I'm just gonna kind of do this. So that could have gone better for my end. Now I have to hit all these flip switches to make another set of flip switches appear. So, yeah, these cosmic ones you see here are kind of annoying. Um, not They're not really in that area, but in later parts of the run, they'll get really terrible. So, so, so I guess I can explain jump cancels. There's another way to cancel landing animations that were, I'm, I don't know if, how much he does it, but I only go for it at the start of stars, where if you jump on the same frame that you land, you can jump out of the landing animation but it's frame perfect in 60 frames per second. So odds are I'll probably get it at most, maybe five times this run out of the many times for it. Yeah, there's 
some levels, like there's just a few levels where you don't even get a landing stone to start, so you don't need to do it. And there are also some places where even if you do get a frame perfect day press, you won't even jump and you can't cancel it no matter what. And there are some stages where it's actually not useful. Like there are some stages where I purposely don't go for a jump cancel. Mm -hmm. All right. So up next is Yoshi Star Galaxy. Yoshi is by far the most broken thing in this game. Uh, and basically, there's a glitch you can do with them called infinite fluttering, where if you crouch during a midair flutter, you cancel the flutter and the cooldown that normally take place, and you can immediately begin fluttering again. And you can do this as many times as you like. And it'll, it's going to allow for some pretty big skips and whatnot. We're actually going to go for a skip on this first star that is widely regarded as one of the biggest reset points in SMG2. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to go to that common metal platform and then head straight to that egg-shaped planet. Failed it. Aww. It's too far right. Ah, I think I dismounted too early. I failed it too. <laughs> well, at least we're still close to each other then. Yeah. It is a really hard flutter to get. Because you have to kind of bounce off that fruit as you see us doing. And that involves timing a bead press right before you land on the fruit. It's not really the hard part, but it's what makes the flutter so specific. I dropped a flutter and still made it. I died again! Oh my god. Uh -huh. That's actually ag aggravating. I don't know what happened there. I think I might have been too late. Yeah. I'm gonna be behind by a lot after this. Should I just not go for it again? Because, I mean, I don't really want to risk failing it three times. Uh, you don't need to go for it again. Uh, I want to save time on you, though. I want to at least get it. Third time's the charm, I'm gonna hope. I'll see. I'm stupid. I just... I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm not gonna go for it again. Oh. <sighs> I'm mad now. So yeah, I... Normally I would have reset after the second death, but this is kind of a marathon run, so I can't. I am definitely going to be behind by about a minute after this. I'm not going for the flutter again, by the way. I'm actually, I actually, I'm going to attempt an easier flutter that I don't think many people know about. So dumb. I practiced this flutter a lot, and I stuck into it. All right, so I'm going to head here, so I'm going to head to the, over here, side flip. That's not going to work. Okay, whatever, I'm just going to do this as intended. So I'm going into Yoshi Star 2, and I'm going to be doing another flutter here. Pretty much every stage where you get Yoshi, except for one, I think, you do... There's like four or five. I can name like four where you don't really have to. In any percent? Where you don't have to have flutter? Yeah. Um... So yeah, you can also use infinite flutter and gain height as I'm just going to show up here. 
I just went underneath that platform again. I'm not very happy. Oh my god. Yes. This is an actual embarrassment. I'm three minutes behind what a good run could be. I pull up Denny and skip all my splits until the very end. Four twenty-eight Yoshi Star I won IL. Just So now I'm going to be heading off to do Yoshi Star 2. By the way, just because I'm literally two minutes behind Cantaloupe right now, I'm probably more than that. I'm probably like three. Doesn't mean I'm out of this race quite yet. Yeah, the race definitely isn't decided yet. You can very easily lose a lot of time. Yeah. Like, as you just saw with Super Viper on Yoshi Star 1, it's very easy to just yeah. fail something repeatedly and Alright, I just got my first jump cancel of the run. Um, so now Canop, I believe, is going to be heading to Spin Dig, which contains the first of Mario's actual power ups. Yep. But we're not going to be using it a whole lot because the developers kind of forgot that Mario can jump. And so you can skip the spin drill on most planets. I'm going to be using it on just this one planet, though. Yeah. You want to talk about homing ground pounds? Oh, yeah. Um, so, when you spin and then ground pound while Mario is still in the spin animation, you get a special ground pound that's called a homing ground pound. And it starts slower than normal ground pound, and it also, like, homes in on enemies or lumas or stars. So, um, Luma Bounce that Super Viper did earlier, he used it filming Ground Pound on Luma. And it used the bounce to launch himself really far. What, I did, what we did on Yoshi Star 2 there with the uh, Spinies is by getting them in Yoshi's mouth, and then by hitting two of them once with Yoshi's tongue, we can get one of them in Yoshi's mouth and then get the other one before the first one makes contact with gear like E2. Save time by doing that. Right. So Cantaloupe's off to one of the, like, Handle's doing one of the only real RNG portions of this game right now, dig a leg. Oh, oh no, yeah. he jumps on you with RNG. Okay, so I got good RNG on the second cycle, but not on the third cycle there. So on the second cycle, he jumped onto me, which is why I went on the third cycle, he jumped away from me. And you want him to jump onto you because then he jumps to the other side of the planet and then starts the next part immediately. And if he doesn't jump on you, he jumps around for a bit first. I'm off to spin dig. Uh, also, what I'm going to do here is a clip where I clip into the corner of that pillar just by jumping backwards into it. And that saves a little bit of walking time. I got an instant talk to one of the Lumas. It's 
So coming up is probably one of the funniest skips in the entire game. Um, after the planet I'm about to go to, um, there's going to be a sequence where Captain Toad wants to talk to me, but I don't want to talk to him, so we're just going to shoot him in the face with star bits. I went into first person mode and kind of shot him in the face. Because I'm a cruel person. So let's see what kind of RNG I happen to get on Digga Leg. Oh, yeah, right now I'm doing right side down. And you're intended to hit a switch to turn the gravity around, but we don't really need to do that. You can just jump past everything. Yeah. I like to consider that the level Nintendo meant for you to break because so many of the skips are so obvious. I got good RNG on the second base, and I also got the Diggas to stay alive, which means Digga like isn't going to spawn anymore now. I can just do that. Okay, I almost died. Yeah, Cano up goes for a harder strat than what I go for with those boxes where he actually tries to skip some of them. Yeah, you can break a box and then make it under the box before they fall down on you. And the reason why it's so risky is because if you get crushed in this game, it's a one-hit kill. So now I'm going to be heading off to right side down. And that last skip you saw Cantaloupe do at the end there with the jumping onto the wall. It's actually intended for you to go out there because there's one-ups in the four corners. And the game just kind of allows you to awkwardly jump back in. So now I'm gonna be giving my now I'm gonna be giving right side I don't wanna go. Okay. I barely, I just died on right side down one. So what I'm doing with these boxes is I'm actually um, doing a strat where I make fireballs quickly, which is done by crouching when you're in the fireball making animation. You can cancel a lot of animations in this game by crouching.
I missed coins in Fluffy Buff Secret, yeah. so I'm going to have to do Fluffy Bluff one instead now. Okay, did you, you miss some in the pipe room? Yeah. Yeah, Fluffy Bluff Secret can be a tough star in that regard, just because if you mess up, then sometimes getting other coins is really hard to find. If you mess up in the pipe room at all, then just, Yeah, in no. the pipe room, um, there are three sets of coins, and if you don't get all the ones from one of the first two sets, the next set won't spawn, so you'll be missing too many coins. And you need I have zero coins. lives right now, I just... Yeah, and you need 100 coins to feed the Hungry Luma. Okay, I just got a wall jump skip there. If you jump as soon as you land and hold neutral from that flower, then you can get a really high jump for whatever reason, and it can allow you to skip that wall jump. I almost had a 12, but I missed like two fireballs. All right. This is making me very sad. I should be done with Fluffy Bluff S by now. I should be, like, tied with you, but no. Anyways. So now I'm going to be going to give Fluffy Bluff Secret a shot. Don't forget to do it, by the way. Yeah. Because I sometimes... I sometimes forget to do it. I've forgotten to do a star in Fluffy Bluff before. So I look like it looks like I'm short on lives, but I'm gonna get like three one-ups from this star, so it's not gonna matter in the end. And if you game over in this game, it's not that big of a deal anyway. Yeah, the game auto saves, and you're not even taken back to the title screen. You just take it back to Starship Mario. Right, so this is kind of cool. If you long jump into the cloud power up, you kind of get Mario to face the camera. And you long jump the wrong way. So I like to leave this room with exactly 60 because it's exactly 40 on this cloud here. I, I did not miss coins. There are some places, there are some planets like this one where a camera cancel just doesn't work. Like, or you have like one frame where you can enter first person mode, so sometimes you can get one, but it doesn't always work. So Cantaloupe is heading off to the best boss ever. Yep. Sometimes this boss is really easy, and sometimes it's very, very hard. Like, yeah. Gobblegut is a very irritating boss, and I actually hate the stage in Fire Flateau more than I hate the boss. So, what I what we should be noted talking about for when we select stars is that we actually point the Wii cursor off screen if it's a clear star we want to select, and we can just mash A to select it. And it makes selecting starts a bit easier. 
So I guess we never really talked about the big skip here. Oh, yeah, um, I just did the skip without mentioning it. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, like, left. sometimes I just forget that the skips are actual skips, because I'm just used to doing it every time. Yeah, so when we long jump off this cloud here, if we use a couple of very well-placed clouds, we actually are able to go all the way to the last planet of the level. Normally, you're not supposed to be able to do this. It's because whenever you're in mid-air as Cloud Mario, um, your mechanics are, your physics are a bit more floaty. Your jumps are just, they last longer. And also, I'm, we're doing, a, there's a lot of mechanics that revolve around the Cloud Power. For example, when we're doing those long jumps where you get a lot of height, um, we're actually abusing the fact that whenever there's a platform moving underneath Mario and it's moving upwards, his jumps get a lot more high. Okay. I messed up the gobble gut fight, but it wasn't too badly. I missed Why'd one of you the mess up? I missed one of the bulges on second phase, but I didn't get hit, so it was still fine. Yeah, sometimes you can lose as little as five seconds and as many as thirty. It just depends on what happens. Yeah. The problem with getting hit is he'll start the cycle over again, so it'll take a lot longer for him to dive into the planet if you get hit. So now I'm going... Dude, I'm going to get a 33 world one. That's like... No. What's your world one time? Let me know. Uh, 3046. Dang, I've got a lot of ground to catch up. Anyways. Alright, so let's see how Fire Flotoa goes for me. I nearly died, but like. Now, that movement that I just did is very hard to do. Even though the movement in this game is pretty basic, it's still very hard to optimize. Like, it might not look like it, but getting optimal long jumps is actually a lot harder than you think. Because if you have to press Z and A at exactly the same time in order for it to work. Oh, yeah. It's uh, something called a running speed long jump. Normally, yeah. at the end of a long jump, you lose your speed, and you have to, like, build up your speed again, or you lose most of it. But if you press Z and A on the same frame, then when you land, you keep the same speed. That you had before. Also, what I did when I got into the planet was something called a frame perfect ground pound, where you have to press Z and spin at the same time to ground pound out of a long jump. Alright, I barely made the third hit. So now Cantaloupe's heading off to Puzzle Plank, one of the more straightforward levels in the game. All right, so what I just did there is a perfect gobble gut. That's how you, that's the gobble gut fight done optimally. And All right. Have you understood? Has anybody does anybody understand what causes you to get double ground pounds on the last planet of Puzzle Plank? No, I don't think anyone knows. Yeah, because the last planet of Puzzle Plank, which is the Puzzle Planet where you have to ground pound the pieces into place, um, somehow at times the gravity is weird and it gives you yeah. an opportunity to get yeah. I just got one there. Stomp one. Yeah. There's also a lot of- have you noticed that there's a lot of boss fights in this game? Yeah. 
Like, seems like all, most galaxies have at least one. I would be remiss if I didn't bring up right now that this game actually has really good music. So now I'm gonna give Puzzle Plank a whirl. Yeah, probably like half of the galaxies, at least in this game, have some boss fight in them. Yeah. We don't fight all of them in any percent, though. Like, hardly any of the stars in this game are actually required. There's like, I think there's 10 if you count the boss worlds mm -hmm. that are actually required to beat the game with any percent. That was not a not bluff long jump. Now, one of the harder things about this game is the controls can be a little bit wonky. Some, like, there are chances that sometimes Mario just, sometimes you're holding a specific direction and Mario just goes the complete wrong direction. Yeah. That's All right, just... so I just did that triple jump perfectly optimally, which means I didn't need to get a ledge grab or a wall jump. Yeah, it's um, especially a problem on small planets or like the gravity changes. And you just like hold a single direction sometimes and Mario walks around in circles. So Ken Alps in one of, in my opinion, one of the cooler Yoshi levels in this game, High Scale Falls. It's because there's a lot of neat tricks everywhere and it's really fast. Oh, this infinite flutter that I'm doing now, um, you don't actually need to crouch like I'm doing in order to make this infinite flutter. Because there is a cooldown between flutters that you can just wait for. So you could still make it all the way there. Uh, just waiting for the cooldown between each flutter. That's a little harder yeah. to do it that way, so I just infinite flutter normally. Another thing we should talk about with Yoshi is that sometimes whenever you dismount off of Yoshi, you carry all of your momentum. Oops. That can be abused several places. And another important point is that while you're infinite fluttering, about 10 seconds after you start, you lose almost all of your momentum like instantly yeah that that probably happened to me on at least one of the times when i started when i've done infinite flutters in the past yeah and it's the reason why we have to jump off yoshi sometimes like on the yoshi star one flutter we have to jump off of him before we reach the planet because if we didn't we would lose all our momentum before we got there and then you'd have to and you can only flutter very slowly to the front or side from there on out so we'd either have to backflip and die or just flutter slowly into the planet's gravity and I think they're around the same speed. Okay, so now I'm going off to Hightail Falls and I believe Canop is going to be heading off to Cosmic Cove. Yeah. I'm actually going to be collecting star bits in Hightail Falls because it's going to mean less time I have to spend at a certain area later. Um, you might have noticed that we've been avoiding star bits for a lot throughout this run, and that's because um, after every star, if you happen to have star bits or coins in your inventory, the text boxes will show up counting up each of them, and they waste like a second each. So it's really just a matter of optimization. Also, I'm going up this left path here because this dash pepper is right here, and I can just pick it up. And I also grabbed this dash pepper light just to keep the effect for as long as possible. These big jumps, as far as I'm concerned, are completely useless. So I just did that without having to crash at all, just to kind of show it off. But yeah, you don't have to crash at all for that flutter. I should... Probably explain this. When you have Dash Yoshi and you're going up a slope and you dismount, you're gonna get a lot of height and distance. So the thing about Cosmic Club 1 is that you collect the 15 coins to feed the Hungry Luma in that star, but you, then you don't actually go to the Hungry Luma planet and you save it for the next star.
And also coming up, it's very important that I select the right star here because on most of these stars, we just move the pointer away from the screen and mash A and it like selects the next star. But here I do not want to select the next star. I want to go back to the first one so I can do the secret. And it loses around it's 30 seconds if I select the wrong one. Yeah, because you can't go to the secret in Cosmic Cove 2. You can only do it in Cosmic Cove 1. Um, there are a couple of instances where we have no choice but to point our cursor at the screen, and that's one of them. So I actually do a completely different route for this section, which I am sure is slower. But it is really consistent. Um, I'm shooting these enemies with star bits because that's how you get coins from Kinda need coins here. Also, in this game, unlike Galaxy 1, underwater spins don't actually give you a boost in speed. So, we're just gonna be using the shell for the most part because they're around the same speed and you have to do less exercise with the shell. Yeah, in Super Mario Galaxy 1, there's no cooldown at all between spins, so you just spin crazy fast one right after the other. And in this game, there's a big cooldown. Kano's gonna be going for a strut on the bunny here, where he's gonna be using star bits to gonna try and stun it. And then grab it early. And it's a little fickle. There, I got it. Yeah. That's actually one of two places where it's the reason why we're playing in white screen. Um, the other is at the very end of the run. Sometimes this waterfall can be a little bit finicky. Oh, so you might be wondering here why I'm going backwards to go back to Boulder Bowl 1 instead of just doing it while I was like on my way to the right. Um, it's important in routing to make Boulder Bowl 1 be your 15th star. Because at 15 stars, you get a mail toad letter. And after Boulder Bowl 1, you go to the engine room to like show that you got the rock power up there. Um, and doing them together makes it so that the, you get the mail toad letter after going to the engine room, so you save time not having to go back up out of the engine room. It does. It's a very, it's very important that we do that. Well, it's it's so easy to miss um, small things like that in a game like this. Also in Boulder Bowl 1, there's a really big skip you can do that saves like, what, 40 seconds? Even though it skips one planet, the planet you do skip is very, very long. And you can do it with or without Rock Mario, but it's harder to do, and it's harder to do with Rock Mario, but you have to do it on Boulder Bowl 1 because you need to get the Comet Medal with Rock Mario. Oh yeah, Comet Medals in this game. Um, yeah. We're collecting them in almost every level we go to. That as in, like, each galaxy has one Comet Medal to collect. And you need a certain number of comet medals for each comet that gets unlocked. So even galaxies that don't have a comet in them, we still collect the comet medal usually. Or have a comet that we're not going to get. Yeah. Alright, so I just got the bunny. And Rollo Dillo, the boss Cantaloupe is about to go to, is a very irritating boss. Because essentially you're gonna try to he's gonna try to chase you while you try to chase him. And it gets very awkward. Canelp actually does something different than what I do. He actually does a jump spin, and I think that actually does make it easier. But I haven't learned that properly yet. 
Oh, yeah, here you see what I was talking about. I'm in the engine room, and it's going to show that I got the rock power up, and then afterwards I'm going to get a letter from Mailtoad, and that's going to be bring me back up out of the engine room. So I'm going to give Vulnerable 1 skip a try. It's basically not possible to do the skip without some sort of visual cue. And I actually use a star as my visual cue. Once a certain star goes off screen, that's when I spin. But it also, that also relies on the fact that you have to basically uh, long jump at the very edge of the platform in order to have a chance of making it. Also, uh, I just talked to Bank Toad and got a bunch of star bits out and that's another one of the reasons why we don't bother collecting star bits in levels. I just did a dumb. I just ground pounded off the edge. That was a good game. Yeah. So that probably cost me around three-ish seconds. Okay, I got the skip first try though. Cool. I don't count that as an attempt at the skip. So the reason why we actually do collect Comet Medals and unlock Hungry Luma Galaxies is because sometimes those stars are actually much faster than stars you could do in normal galaxies despite the amount of time you have to spend to unlock them. Yeah, for example, this star that I'm doing right now is probably the fastest star in the game. In any percent. It yeah. Is, it that, is the fastest star in any percent. Yeah, other than the green stars that you get after you get 120 stars. Oh, I almost got an early hit there on Rolodillo. Yeah, this is, a, like I said, this is a really fickle boss. I, I barely missed him again. See, I just don't want him to, I just don't want him, I just don't want to end up in his line of sight, because then he does this rolling attack that wastes a lot of time. Ah, uh, I almost made it three times in a row. That's a little disappointing. So right there, I just kind of transformed into Rock Mario as I grabbed the star because that actually makes your hitbox extend upwards slightly. And like Cantaloupe explained earlier, here you're going to see the advantage of doing Boldable 1 as your 15th star. So now Cantaloupe's going to be heading off to the first Bowser level of the game, uh, Lava Lair, which is full of a bunch of skips pretty much all over the run. And health management is very important in this level because yeah. there are some places where I need to take damage and I need to have enough health to do that. Yes. It's actually going to be the reason why he's going to grab a life mushroom uh, at the beginning of the level because even though that wastes a couple seconds because of the animation, um, it's going to give him three extra health and that's going to be useful for some lava boost stress we're going to do. Alright, so I just got all the star bits I need from the bank card. Okay, so now that I've gotten this, it's very important that I don't go back below 4 HP, or I lose this and I can't heal it back up. You want to explain uh, lava storage triple jumps? Because I don't do that. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to do a double jump here. And then after I hit the lava, I'm going to do my third triple jump. Just like that. It just stores um, the current state of your jump, I guess. And lets you do the last one afterwards. Lava boosting in this game is really weird. And as a matter of fact, it's also some something kind of where the candle does for the statues at the end, where if you bounce on lava once and then land in the ground again, if you bounce on lava 
and then land on the ground. You do a short hop, and then after the hop, you're able to regain control of Mario. But that holds true even if you do the hop and then land right in the lava again and then land on the ground. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I had to bounce on two statues there. I'm gonna give my go of lava lair. I just got another jump cancel. Yeah, as you can see, we just do two back to back gravity skips. One skips uh, killing a Kamek to make a full star appear, and the other skips the spring and saves like literally nothing. Sometimes on this skip that I'm about to do here, you just kind of get, get, you just kind of have Mario land on a floor. So how'd your Bowser fight go, Cantaloupe? Uh, it went well. Alright. 5209, World 2. Alright. I was at a 52 World 2. You had a really, you had a really, that was like a really solid World 2. Yep. Ah, oh, I almost got a double lock. You can hit two of these locks at once with one Meteor. I actually did it in a practice race we did last night. It's incredibly rare. I think I'm on pace to get a 55 roll too. That is disgusting. Antelope. Yeah. Are you dropping any frames? No, I'm not dropping any frames. It looks perfect from my perspective. Uh, can you try lowering your bitrate? Uh, okay. This is my, not a lot. Yeah, the nice thing about this game is that there is a lot of downtime. So you can do stuff like that during while you're streaming. In fact, there might be more downtime than gameplay in this game. But the gameplay makes up for it. Alright, so I'm, I normally collect a coin here, but hitting one of those things actually gives you lag frames. Right, so that first hit was pretty optimal. Typically what I try to do is I try to have Bowser slam his fist as close as possible to the meteor without breaking it. And then I try to ground pound the meteor in such a way that it has to travel the least amount of distance before it hits Bowser's fist. Somewhat like that. And on this second phase, I have to keep an eye on Bowser's fire attack. I want to keep track of where it ends. Because that's where he's actually going to start his next punch. And um, if I am where Bowser is when he gets punching, then he'll punch right away. Uh, you have to, 
it takes the timing for getting a ground pound on the meteors is really weird. Sometimes you're able to get one right away, and sometimes you have to be a little bit. I don't know what is it. Also, don't do a triple jump on this planet. It screws the camera up. And every missed hit is around 20 seconds. So, Candle, if you want to explain the crushers at the end of Cloudy Court 1, since you're there right now. Uh, yeah, there's a cycle I have to make here. Um, it only starts once you get close. But... Yeah, that. You have to go through it, getting the Comet Medal on the way. And that's hard to make. Candle have actually made that setup, I think. No, I... Wait, maybe I did. I don't remember. I feel like I Well, the setup you somewhere. use is free. Yeah. 5515 World 2, disgusting. But, you know, what are you gonna do? I think. I don't know where that is in comparison to my Summit Best, because I'm not actually comparing against any splits right now. I skipped all of my splits until the very end. I don't want to look at them. Yeah, I understand. But like we said earlier, there's a lot of ways you can gain or lose time in this game, so nothing's for sure yet. Also, I think... Okay. It doesn't say I've dropped stream was a little choppy on the restream. So there's this mini game I'm about to do. Um, it's oh, a okay. skating mini game. And what score I get doesn't matter in terms of speed, but it's still fun to see how high of a score I can get. So if any everyone in chat could just guess what score I get, um, it's a minimum of 500 and it's multiples of 10. What's the maximum though? Uh... I usually do 900. Yeah. That's my maximum. Because, like, who is good enough to get 900 in an RTA? Especially as Mario, because does Luigi skate faster than Mario? Alright, so yeah. let's go another jump. Yeah, Luigi's faster. Alright, nice. so we'll talk about Luigi more in a little bit, but I guess a couple things to mention about Cloudy Court there is, like, what I just did there is I did a cloud boost into that cloud. And that gave me three extra clouds, plus the cloud I had already used. So I essentially used four clouds for that skip. Alright, let's see if I can make it all the way to this cloud. I hope that this Akuma doesn't wreck me, because it is the worst enemy known to mankind. Alright, it will just wreck you. I'm gonna do another four cloud strat here. And I got this cycle I need to make. I'm gonna try to make the same cycle that Candlelight made. I barely made it. <laughs> nice. I like messed up the strat and I had to basically improvise and I almost got squished but I was able to get on the top cloud quickly enough. So what score did you get? 710. Nice. Let's see if I can beat that. 108 Cloudy Court. That's like pretty optimal for me. Sub 110 on Cloudy Court is always really good. Oh, well, here, there's a cycle I need to make. Um, the flower, the fire flower I just got, I need to keep it until I get to the comet metal on this next planet. And if he doesn't, he loses about 20 seconds. Yeah. So now I'm apt to do the points minigame if anybody in chat wants to kind of take their bets on me. You don't really win anything if you get it right. You just win, like, bragging rights.
Alright, so something about this minigame is that um, the RNG for this minigame um, is that the gummits, their rotation can be rotated one of four different ways, but the patterns themselves are always the same. So. Yeah, once you see which corner it is at the start, you know the entire what the entire pattern is going to be. Well, I mean, I don't, but it doesn't well, matter. It is possible to know, is what I mean. <laughs> like, yeah. I beat you, I got 780. I think that means you're going to win the race. I need to make Wait, I got Luma out. Bounce. That means I won the race by default. Oh, yeah, that's true. You're probably still, like, three minutes ahead of me. But I didn't have that bad of a World 2 until Floatable. And right now, my World 3 doesn't actually suck. So, Cantaloupe's in Honey Halls right now, and Honey Halls 1 is an interesting star in terms of how the cycles work, because the first two platforms on the second planet are cycle based, but the second two are based on um, a trigger zone. And then the Comet Metal platform is. Didn't Yoshi fan say that was based on when you enter the launch star? Yeah, it's when you enter the launch star. Because the thing about cycles in this game is that they will only move when they're on camera. Like, moving objects only move when the game considers them on camera. Um, you can also affect the first two cycles by turning your camera at the very start. But it doesn't really matter. I think if you do it really well, and you like also get the landing cancel on the second planet, you can make an earlier cycle on the second one. And that can save time, but it's really difficult. Yeah. So... Canop actually did a clip into the slide on Freezy Flake 1, which I don't do, but as you can see, you don't need it. You still have a couple seconds of leniency. I think I actually missed the clip. Yeah, it's a pretty precise clip. So I'm going to go for something here that we don't even know if it saves time or not. Uh, although I am kind of low on health. So, yeah, I didn't get it. If you time that fireball throw right there, you can actually make it hit the Bowser statue. And you only have to do two fireball hits there, but it might not save time because you delay hitting the lava. Alright, so the first comet just appeared for Cantaloupe. And so we're going to start having to deal with comets. They start appearing once you get four stars from World 3. Yep, and comets are just versions of the levels you've already done with something added to it. Or, like, it's just different in some way. Yeah, so for instance here, he's going to have to deal with more of those cosmic clones from earlier. And like I said before, cosmic clones make backtracking really difficult, so he's going to have to make sure he doesn't mess up. I almost died <laughs> on the first planet, Cloudy Court Comet. Yeah. Deathless runs of SMG2 are rare. In fact, they almost never happen. You're almost guaranteed to die in this game at least once per run. I think my best is currently two. Even the world record has multiple deaths in it. Yeah. Ah, I didn't get a frame perfect camera cancel. The Cosmic Cones are especially bad in the 2D section of the level because you're limited to left-right movement. And so it's kind of hard to save yourself if you, like, for example, fall during the wall jumping section. So yeah, you don't have to ride these platforms for the entire duration of that. You can skip some. I can also jump this comment up from here. And also, on this last planet here, we get Yoshi. So, uh, you can guess what we're going to do here. So 
the cantaloupe's now off to Tall Trunk 1, which is another one of my favorite levels. Um, just because of how satisfying it is to get all the tricks in it. For example, on this first planet, you're actually supposed to use Yoshi and the Blimp Fruit to climb up. But the thing is, trying to use Yoshi to climb up a vertical distance is actually a lot slower than you think. So, Yoshi is of no use to us on that planet. Because Mario is a skilled acrobat, we can climb up the tree without Yoshi. Okay, I got all the hard stuff in Tall Trunk 1, and it went really well. Tall Trunk 1 is... It's easy to do consistently, but it's, like, hard to learn once you... I guess. I don't know. Try it. Also, this is one of those stars where you don't actually need to get a landing and cancel because you're able to move right away. And something cool I'm going to try to do here is if you just barely touch the edge of these starships, then the cosmic clones that are supposed to appear won't. Okay, I didn't get it there. I messed up on the fourth one. But yeah, you can make it through all five of those without ever activating the cosmic clones once. Right there, I did a nunchuck spin because um, the thing about nunchuck spins is that you're, the you know, nunchuck spins with Mario are actually shorter, but the nunchuck also allows you to spin earlier. So I can use that to... Yeah, it's weird. Um, pressing A makes it so that there is a period of time right after it where you can't spin with the Wiimote, but you can still spin with a nunchuck during that period. Another thing about Wii Remotes and Nunchuck Spins is that for Mario, um, Wii Remote Spins actually give you more height, but for Luigi, who we're never going to use in this run, Nunchuck Spins give you more height, and that is And now we're letting the comets kind of start to build up while um, we get some World 3 stars, and we're going to backtrack for a few of them later on. So Canop's going to be heading off to Long Jumping Simulator 2010. Yep. Um, it's literally just a bunch of long jumps. With a couple spins here and there. But it's just a billion long jumps. And I'm going to be heading off to Tall Trunk now. Let's see how this goes for me. That second jump is a very precise, requires a very precise angle. Another thing about wall jumping in this game, which you just kind of saw abused there, is that whatever angle you're holding on the nunchuck, when you go into a wall jump, that's actually the angle you wall jump off of to get the wall jump. So like there, I was holding slightly towards the tree branch, and that allowed me to wall jump towards it. And that can actually be abused in many different ways, but not it's not going to be seen a whole lot in this run. Alright, that infinite flutter to the common metal is very awkward, because you once you hover forward in the air, or if you're in the air for too long, you lose the ability to infinite flutter backwards. Um, so if you mess that flutter up at all, then you have to grab the fruit and it wastes a ton of time. I tried to get a frame perfect ground pound there, but I ended up getting a homing ground pound, which means I timed my ground pound too late. And uh, you might think, why don't you just infinite flutter up this tree with Yoshi? Um, like I said earlier, infinite fluttering upwards is actually really slow. So we don't need to do that. I'm actually going to do another thing with the nunchuck here. Rather than get out of Yoshi form, out of the Yoshi form with the Wii remote, I do it with the nunchuck because then I can have the Wii cur remote cursor pointed at another limp fruit and I can grab it easier. Yeah, overall, aside from messing up one part of Yoshi's skip on the first planet, that went really well. So the interesting thing about the Hunger Luma cantaloupe just fed is because the last star bit, for whatever reason, always gets shot out later than the 
has, and doesn't, none of us have figured out why. It doesn't always happen, though. It sometimes no. happens, and it's just inconsistent it, and random. No, it always happens to me. I don't know why. Oh. Oh, that's weird, then. It only sometimes happens to me. Like, I've never had a rhyme where it didn't appear early, or if it didn't appear at the right time. And this level Cantaloupe's doing is very cycle-based, because the blocks transition between yellow and green every eight beats of the song. Alright. I got a good bleep, bleep block one. That's the optimal cycle. Yeah. So now, Canop is actually going to be going back to Worlds 1 and 2 and clearing out most of the Comet stars there. Yeah. Since we don't unlock Comets until we do 4 stars in World 3, we have to go back for Comets that we didn't get earlier. And thankfully, Comets in this game are a lot more forgiving to deal with than they are in Galaxy 1, because it means routing mistakes are forgivable, at least. Yeah, you know, once a comet spawns in this game, it's there forever until you complete it. Until you get it. Yeah. In Galaxy 1, which comets are available is constantly changing every time you complete a star. They work on cycles, and any routing mistakes will cause the cycles to be thrown off, and you can lose a buttload of time by having that happen. But in this game, it doesn't matter at all if you make a rounding mistake, really. It's, gonna, you can just, it's do just an inconvenient time loss. So the comment Candle is doing now is a star that's on a timer. Um, you have 20 seconds to begin with, but there's clocks throughout the level that allow you to add extra time to your uh, remaining time. So it's kind of there's a little bit of routing that goes into it. Yeah, that as you saw there, the last star bit kind of got shot out late for me. Kind of overshot the helm a little bit. It's actually possible to soft lock on Kiwis, but thankfully that's very rare. Like, and, it's not likely. Yeah. And since the game auto saves, it doesn't matter too much. You just have to do the level over. Although, if it were to happen on the first star of the run, then that's basically a reset because <laughs> you haven't started the game yet. Yeah. You haven't completed the level, so it hasn't saved back. at all yet. You can't exit back and you can't die. So, you're screwed, basically. Okay, I made the fast cycle in E block. Nice. One. Although I kind of had a weird scenario happen. I actually bounced off of one of the enemies at the last second. And I, then I failed to grab the star because of a good video game. So the next star Canelope's doing is Yoshi Star Comet, which um, is the first star where we get to see the rainbow power up, which. If you handle it properly, you can allow you to walk at a ridiculously high speed. But you have to be able to maintain that speed throughout the entire star without running into walls. Or now I'm going to be heading off to do the World 1 comments. Something I should point out, Nintendo spells speedrun with a space. Um, okay. You can see there, speed run. Apparently speed run is two words. 
Yep, it's official from Nintendo. We need to start a new website and call it speedspacerun.com. No, the, the space word has to be there. So it's, it's speedspace.com. Thankfully, though, this star is actually kind of a shortened version of the first star. Okay. Normally, I grab that clock, but uh, I was a little bit late on my platform cycles. But thankfully, I think I can do Pee Wee in 10 seconds. If time runs out, you just die and you have to restart the level. Uh oh. That's bad. But thankfully, there's clocks. Uh oh. Stop. Okay. That could have gone way worse. Like I said, the second hit is a lot easier to get than the first. There we go. Yeah, what happened there is I ground pounded too early on Kiwi. So what Cantaloupe's about to attempt now in Flip Swap Galaxy is really impressive if pulled off properly. Um, he's going to attempt to use the upwards momentum platform physics that I talked about earlier to get some big long jumps off the flip switch platforms or whatever they're called. I just thought I was going to flip swap, so I moved the space ahead on the world map. Ah, uh, nice save there. Yeah, that wasn't a very good flip swap. But I didn't die or anything, so it's fine. I got yeah, three dying. of the four super jumps. Yeah, dying on the flip swap is bad. Especially with the strats we use, because typically we're not going to grab the checkpoint. And uh, that means if we die anywhere, we have to start the entire level over. So the next star Cantaloupe's doing is Puzzle Blank Comet. And you might be thinking, well, why are you only going to World 2 to get this star when you could just do it at any point in the run? Well, um, Puzzle Blank Comet kind of unlocks all the purple coin comments in the game. Also, this is a very slow game. Yeah, it's two things. Um, we have to do it now because it unlocks all the other purple coin comets, and we're not bothering with doing the other comets now because we're going to have to come back here again anyway once we get a letter for Boulder Bowl. Uh, and and also, there's Bowl another letter. comet. There's another comet in World 1 that requires oh, yeah. um, 20 comet medals. Okay, so what you just saw there, you might have noticed that the counter was at. Um, 19, 29 out of 30 spinies for a little bit, even though it appeared that I had gotten all the spinies, and that's like what I said earlier. The game won't count. The game won't let anything update unless it's on camera. That includes if a spiny dies on that star. So if a spiny dies and then you move off camera, then it just doesn't die. Now I'm going to give Flip Swap a go. So, Alright, so now Candle is going to be heading off to Fearsome Fleet, where we're going to be attempting what is probably the hardest flutter in the game. Yeah. Or at least what is considered one of them. 
I'd say it's definitely the hardest set of letters that you do in a level. We call it the question block flutter. Yeah. So there's going to be three flutters that I'm doing. The first, I'm just going to get onto a meteor. That's not that much of a problem. But then I'm going to need to flutter to a question block that's out in the middle of nowhere and then get a very precise angle and flutter off of the question block through a comet metal and to the end. And that one is really difficult. Okay, so I just made all four of the super jumps in flip swap. None of them are really hard, but they're just precise. Right. Also, for question block flutter, if you die anywhere, you don't get any checkpoints in that level either, so you can lose an upwards of about a minute. I got it. It went really well. I got the angle almost immediately. Yeah. The thing about the angle, sometimes you can take so long to set it up that it's not even worth going for. And other times you just get it right away. There's like three angles out of work. Yeah, sometimes you can get, kind of get caught on the slope there. I noticed that you do, whenever Mario ends up at the bottom of the helm, you do different movement than I do. Is there a time difference or is it just preference? Um, I don't know. I have no idea which is faster. I've never, like, timed it or anything. So now I'm going to do Puzzle Blank Comet, and Hanop's going to fight one of the most irritating bosses in the game, Mega Hammer. This is the boss where you want your sensor bar to cooperate. Okay, now hopefully I still have the bullet bill after this cutscene. Yep, I still do. Sometimes that bullet bill can randomly disappear from Yoshi's mouth. And I'm not sure why exactly that happens. Who is? Alright, so I missed that coin, I am aware. I will go back to it in a sec. I actually wasn't sure where it was. So it's hopeful I don't grab any star bits during that. So that wasted me a little bit of time, but it didn't really matter because I was right next to the star at the end. You're probably ahead of my PB right now. Uh, let me check. Yeah, I'm ahead of your PB. Yeah, for the record, I have the third place time and Candle has the fourth place time, but our skill level is very close. And we're kind of fighting to see who can maintain third place for longer. Uh, Nemi43 has the second place time, and Valu111 has the first place time. So now I'm going to give Question Block Flutter a shot. I actually hate the second flutter more than I hate the third one, because it's very easy to overshoot. But this is a really good angle, so I'm fine. I also got question block flare first try, and it also went really well. Nice. Yeah, that might we might have made that look easy, but that is not easy. It is not easy to get that flutter.
So that's what my pointer behaves. And meanwhile, Cantaloupe's doing another level that's entirely about infinite flittering. Oh, so yeah. another one of those levels. By the way, uh, when we're setting up the angle for that last flutter, it might look like we're just facing exactly right, but we're not. We're facing just like barely below right. And it's really precise, the angle you have to do. All right, so what I did there is kind of an early hit there, but I don't actually want to get an early hit on this second phase because it's going to cancel one of his animations. When he was shaking his hand, okay, I don't know if I got it. I, I was like really early. Okay, I got it. I literally shot the bullet bill in like the first possible frame. Okay, I just okay. did that. There, I had to die again there. Um, because once you start fluttering like that, you can't move backwards with Yoshi. I died twice right. at the start of Sweet Mystery. Okay, there, it went well that time. Okay. Okay, so I stored the ball bill, but I kind of messed up the second phase. Um, it's hard to do it. So yeah, he still has a hitbox, even though he hasn't lowered himself yet. Okay, and I... I managed to get it on the second try. This is a high 126 that's like four and a half minutes off my best pace ever. And as you can see there, you literally just flutter to the one star because again, backwards momentum is faster than forward momentum. <sighs> So lonely. World four is one of the hardest worlds in SMG two. Any percent, um, it's probably the hardest one, or at least it's the one that's easiest to lose the most time. Oh yeah, the level Cantaloupe's doing, uh, Flip Still 1, is probably one of the most appealing levels to viewers, just because of the skips we do. Although, the level itself is actually pretty simple. Just us. So now I'm gonna give Sweet Mystery a go. Let's see if I happen to meet the same fate that Candle does with this level. So I had to cut my flutter a little bit short there because of my angle. You can infinite flutter all the way over to that comet metal. It's very important that I don't fall here, and I dropped a flutter, so I came kind of close to it. 
It's very important that I don't fall there, because if I do, there's an invisible floor underneath you. And um, it takes about like 20 seconds to find a ledge to fall off of. So... Thankfully, even with the drop flutter, I still made it. Also, now I, I officially have the amount of star bits that I need in order to keep the game. With this route. I think Kano probably still needs to do a few more. Yeah, I need about... Um, actually, something like 180 more? Somewhere around there. The thing is, though, there's a level later on in the game that's easy to get star bits from. Yeah. There's a couple of them, actually. So now I'm gonna give Flipso one a shot. And uh, Canop's in one of the s in Flipso too. All three stars in Flipso are very cool for their own reasons. Um, Flipso, they're all really technical. You can use that jump that I did there to go all the way to the Toad planet, but it's faster to go to the boss planet. And I tried to do another frame for a ground pound there, but bad game. It's hard to manipulate the um, motion controls to be timed properly in your favor. Also, the thing about Glam Dozer here is... Um, the entire boss's body, the entire underside of him is vulnerable to attack, not just the target on his back. So, you can just wait for him to become vulnerable and then ground pound him beneath his chin. Now Candle's doing one of the worst stars in the game, even though it doesn't look like it is a bad star. Um, Sweet Mystery Comet is probably the most irritating star in all of World 4. The thing about Yoshi is that he walks very fast. And it's hard to collect purple coins optimally when walking really fast. I just died. Wow. Yeah, the problem there, I... um, when you jump with Yoshi, you want to tap A twice, so you do a little flutter again. But that flutter what? makes it so that um, you can't do another flutter after it right away, because of the cooldown. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, that's an unfortunate thing that can happen. Also, this long jump, I'm, uh, this I literally just derived the strat like right before this run. All right, and I made it. So that's a little bit slower, but it, it seems a lot more consistent than what Cantaloupe did for that beginning. All right, so now let's hope I can get the proper cycle here. That first room is the hardest part of this entire star, so once you get past that, you're usually good. That star grab is really random. Like, sometimes you're able to grab the star from below, other times you just can't. All right, so now I'm gonna give Sweet Mystery Comet a go. The star Canop's about to do flip, so Comet is 
probably one of the most... It's probably the, one of the tightest stars in SMG2 any percent. Just because making the fastest cycle requires that you play pretty much perfectly for the first, like, 35 seconds. Yeah. And it also requires motion controls, so those are amazing to manipulate. Mm -hmm. And even more so, you have to rely on the spin drill's hitbox while drilling because it's actually really huge and you collect a lot of nearby coins with it. So let's see how this goes. Hi, Luigi. Yeah, Luigi will sometimes appear at the start of levels, and he actually is faster to use than Mario, but unfortunately, switching to him for stars is actually slower, because he talks to you both before and after the stars. And you only get to use him for that one star. I was literally just about to say, for whatever reason, you can just kind of walk across those platforms without having to worry about falling, but he fell. I was able to infinite flutter back up, though. Yeah, I said earlier that infinite fluttering to gain height isn't really that advantageful. It's slow, but it can save your butt there like it just did with me. So we kind of go back and forth between Flipstone and Sweet Mystery because the thing is, once a comet appears on the... You can't... Okay, I guess what I'm trying to explain here is you can't unlock a comet until you've done all the main stars of that galaxy, but you have to have at least one star in between the last main star of the galaxy and the comet. Otherwise, the comet won't spawn. So yeah, in order to unlock a comet, you have to do the main stars, then do a different star somewhere else, and then come back. So now I'm ready to do um, close to a comet. And, su and Cantaloupe's in Supermassive where things are bigger and better. Oh, by the way, this is a place uh, the Koopas right here are the place to come if you want to grind lives in this game. You can long jump onto a Koopa and then just keep bouncing on it. And after like your 8th bounce, you get a life on every bounce you do. That's useful to know if you want to practice things more efficiently and just dying to do the level over again. Because, yeah, this game, unlike um, other 3D Marios, practicing is a bit more of a pain. Okay, sure. I can come back for that purple coin later. Because as long as I stay on this cycle, I'm not really going to lose a whole lot of time. I'm gonna be able to collect those coins. Oh. So that could have gone better. But thankfully, I stayed on the cycle throughout. It was just those two coins that got me. around nine seconds there, which isn't terrible, considering I only really made mistakes in the last room. So I'm done with those two galaxies, and now I'm going to be heading off to Super So yeah, this is going to be the one of the, I think this might be the first star where I'm, where actually, where we actually turned the camera 
to manipulate the timing of moving elements. Uh, in this case, we're manipulating the timing of the pipes and those swamps up ahead. Oh, I just messed up the slope climb in Chomperk's one and barely saved it and got up anyway. Yeah. Yeah, the thing with that uh, slope, for some reason you can walk oh. up the very edge of it. I meant to get a like momentum boost off that pipe, but I long jumped too late. What was that? Okay, I just kind of got pushed to the side there. I don't know what happened there. Alright, so let's try this again. These creepers kind of line up perfectly so that you can just drill for each of them. And right here, I'm going to turn the camera again to manipulate the timing of the moving platforms up ahead. Although, since I died, my cycles aren't exactly what I'm used to. They were still fine. They still lined up properly. We actually used to get two stars in this level, but due to recent routing optimizations, um, we only get one. Now I'm going to be heading off to Chompworks myself. This first star is kind of slow and kind of... It looks boring, and it kind of is, but there is actually a lot that goes into this star. Um, it is mostly auto-scrollers, though. Uh, but Chompworks 2 and Chompworks Comet are pretty fast stars, so that makes up for it. So what I'm going to do here is something we didn't used to think was possible, uh, where I'm going to head on the left side of the seesaw, and it just it's just going to barely lower it enough for this chomp to make it on. We actually didn't used to think that was possible, and it is kind of specific. And this last planet is an auto-scroller. That's fine. I have to wait for this chomp to show up anyways. You actually can't make this chomp cycle with only one player. If you have a second player, then you can hold the chomp in place and make it earlier. I 
wait to get some full jumps off that button. That was a very good jump works one. I think that's about as optimal as you can do it. So now Canelp is doing Starshine Beach, which you would think is a slow and boring level because it's a beach, but it is actually very interesting. And on this first star, we get Yoshi, who, unlike in Mario Sunshine, doesn't dissolve when he goes into water. So. That'll be fun. And the infinite flare to the tower from the first silver star to the second is a little finicky because the camera lies to you about where your actual position is. And if you're too far forward, you have to dismount. And in Chompworks 2, we have access to Spring Mario, but I'm not actually going to be using him for these first two planets because Spring Mario sucks. So I can just do that on the first star like I did on... So like on the first star, I can do that. Now, air jumping exists, so you don't even need to care. Shouts to Pac-Man. I'll steal some starbits from him. Shouts to Pac-Man will remix the greatest speed game ever, IMO. Yeah, you can make an early cycle on this star, but it's re really, really hard to get without getting the jump cancel at the start because this planet is actually visible from the starting planet. And so because of that, it's very hard to get the optimal cycle without getting the jump cancel. You've been kind of quiet, Cantaloupe. You just focusing? Yeah, I've been keeping my mic muted because my family's being really noisy right now. Ah. I just got a 59 second chomp works too. That's like rare. Okay, so now I'm gonna head off to Starshine Beach after I pointlessly grab star bits. So the star cantaloupe's about to do Starshine Beach too has a really big skip in it where by using a Chuckster and the six frame window, you have to jump off a cloud without Cloud Mario or V Mario. You can just skip the entire level. Thankfully, that cooldown existed. Alright. So I kind of messed up that flutter there, so now I'm going to have to flutter really slowly to this tower. Try to go for another cool dismount here. Alright, I kind of got it. So 
That combat metal might look out of the way, but it's it, it, the common start for this level is really fast. Bounce on that. Count to while we're at it. I don't even think I can get a sub two world four. four. That makes me very sad. So the Star Cantaloupe's doing Chompworks Comet is the devil in disguise once again. Because even though it's a short star, it's terrible because the Cosmic Clones make backtracking, like, impossible. And on top of that, it's also an auto-scroller. But you can get a free world record in it if you know how to do it properly. Yeah, free tied world record with a bunch of other people. Yeah, I think, I think there's like probably like five or six people who hold it now. So now I'm going to give Starshine Beach 2 a roll, and Cantaloupe's going to attempt the best skip in the entire game, IMO. It's called Behind the Castle. It's essentially, you skip most of the 2D section by going into the area behind the castle, but it's a lot more, it's a lot more than just lava boosting behind there. There's a lot that goes into it in order to make sure you don't die randomly. Because the thing is, um, if you're too close to the castle when you do the skip, um, then you kind of get stuck in this weird area and you just stay there until you die. And if you're too far away, you actually fall off the edge and die also. And the reason why we have to do behind the castle on star one is because we need the comet metal. There is another skip. Failed it. That's too um, close to the castle. Too close. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, that's what that's what happens when you're too close. Um, but there is a backup he's gonna go for. It's gonna do the other skip now, I believe. Yeah. So in order to do behind the castle, you need the life mushroom. And if I'm going back for the life mushroom, I might as well do this other skip anyway, because you do it right here. I wonder where you're, what even causes you to get stuck. Like, is there just some weird limbo area that I'm unaware of? Oh yeah, the sound in the background, you might be hearing my computer fan. It likes to act up. So, uh, just don't worry about it too much. There's nothing I can do about it. I just got a jump cancel on Chompworks Comet. Is that bad? Uh, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna barely make this. That might actually be optimal, I think. Is if you cause the chain chomp to break literally right as the cutscene begins. I think that's what it is. So I'm gonna be slow here because I don't want these cosmic to catch up to me. That's fine because, luckily, invincibility frames are a thing. I am not going to get the world record. Rip. I think I can still get a sub two world. Um, what's your gravity gauntlet one gold? Uh, five oh four point three. Okay, I can definitely get a sub two. I can get. I definitely get a sub two world four. I got 51.66 on Chompworks Comet. The IL record is 51.2, held by I don't know how many people. Oh, right here, I'm waiting to hit Bowser with this meteor so that I cancel his next punch by hitting him as soon as he starts the punch animation. Has it, has it been determined what the net time save from that is? It's probably like a second how long you have to wait. I don't know. Alright, so now I'm gonna get behind the castle of whirl. 
Imagine if you die from being too close and I die from being too far away. This movement I'm about to do here is kind of cool. I just do no. a double jump to jump over that pit. Okay, I missed um, a meteor. Bowser right. was pretty far from the meteor, and I hit it into the planet. So now I'm gonna get behind the castle like go. Uh-oh. Okay, I got behind the castle. Nice. So yeah, that skip is pretty technical, but thankfully it didn't give me an issue. What I believe our setup is, we start as close to the castle as possible, and then um, once the gravity changes, no, and once the camera changes, we want to hold up right for about as long as it takes for Mario to cross the length of one floor tile, which is about half a second. And then from there, we can just hold straight right, and you'll usually have the right alignment at that point, but it can sometimes be pretty random. I just missed another lock. Um, apparently locks, yeah, locks really hate me in this game for some reason. I don't know why because they're not actually hard to aim. So now I'm in the Bowser fight. Did you get a 156 World 4 or did you just no. barely miss it? Oh. 157.10. I might be able to close the gap slightly here. I, I like to just hold up here because every single time, if you just hold up, Bowser's fist will always miss you both times and you'll always get it right away. I'm still holding up by the way, but Mario's apparently going up left. That's kind of funny. All right, so now I'm gonna the punch cancel. Uh oh. That's fine. That's fine, because it, that actually wasted no time at all, because I still got the punch cancel. This is also the only Bowser fight where Bowser's going to drop two meteors instead of one. You mean instead so, of three? I mean, instead of three, my bad. So it's actually possible for Bowser to um, punch all the available meteors out, and that's bad. That was really close to his shell. If you hit too close to his shell on these fights, um, then the meteor will actually deflect, so you want to avoid that. Alright, so Bowser's flame is ending in a really bad spot, but it's fine. All right, I had a really good gravity gauntlet. So now Canop's gonna do Hightail Falls Comet, which is essentially the same as Hightail Falls 1, except the ending's gonna be a little bit different and there's some obstacles that, for the most part, aren't going to get in the way. And you're on the timer, but that's the least of your worries. Yeah, the only reason the ending is different is because here we don't need to collect a Comet Medal. Because this is the Comet level. Oh. Wow, I've never had that happen to me quite like that. Uh, did you die? No, um, I just bonked with Yoshi very close to the launch star at the end of the second planet. I just like How much turned time? too early. Um, yeah, I think I had that happen to me in the race we did the other day. Ah, uh, I think he ran into a meteor actually. Oh, well, maybe. But yeah, you can hit those meteors and they can knock you off. Oh, okay. Yeah, here I'm trying to jump directly up. Um, and the timing is kind of precise. I got it that time. Yeah, 
It seems that I think it has to do with tilt. Like, do you understand tilt in the Galaxy games? Um, because I'm pretty sure that tilt in Galaxy Two works very differently. Well, I mean, Galaxy like, one? it doesn't get stored. It doesn't get yeah. stored. Like, I think it still exists. Yeah. So, um, I think the reason that jump works is because of tilt, which happens when the direction of gravity changes. And it doesn't get stored, but you can use it because it just changed, or something like that. I'm not okay. sure exactly how it works. There are some and also, Candle's about that. to do the most RNG-heavy star in the entire run. This, this next star he's going to do is, like, actually trash. So the crabbers can just move however they want to move, and he's going to try to see if he is able to deal with them all without any major issues. I just did a sweep with the Wii remote, and I'm pretty sure my cursor went in like a full orbit around the screen. Okay, yeah. That turn is really precise. Oh, by the way, um... The way I'm stopping the roll, um, I jump and then press C, like the inputs for a ground pound, and that just The game removes. never tells you you can do that. Yeah. So either it's a glitch or just something they forgot to point out. That was actually a really good boulder bowl comment, and it was a three second gold. Crap. So now I'm gonna give that big jump att an attempt here. First try, idiot. Chalice of Simple Flips. Oh my god. And then I mess up the star grab. The momentum you can get from that thing is really weird. Like, sometimes you have to shake in order to get Yoshi to go backwards. So now Cantaloupe's going to do a star where you actually have to save a Goomba. Wow, I missed that. I think I spun too soon. That's not a jump uh, I normally miss. miss. Um, just the long jump, like, before doing the skip. Yeah, so he's going to show you Boulder Bowl 1 skip. It's easier than with, than with Rock Mario when you're doing it without Rock Mario, but it can still be pretty troublesome. Right, and I'm about to attempt Boulder Bowl Comet. Okay, I literally just pressed A. I didn't even mash, and I got a jump cancel. Nice. So these blue crabbers are the more annoying ones of the bunch because um, their movement is more random. And I guess more erratic is the word I'm looking for. So essentially what I want here is I want them to kind of group up, and once I get around 24, 25 of them, then I can start focusing on, like, the individual ones. So, yeah, like, right here I'm going to start focusing on individual ones. Okay, I got all the um, blue crabbers out of the way, I'm pretty sure. All right, where's the last mother? Wow. I have no idea where the star is in, rel in relation to me. Not that far away. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. And the star candle just did. You can actually soft lock on it if you're unlucky. Yeah, it's never happened to me, but I've seen it happen to other people. It's yeah, it's never happened to me either. When you bring the Goomba uh, to the Gearmo, sometimes the game just freezes there and won't move on. It's incredibly rare. Who have you seen it happen to other than Patel? Because I know Patel has a highlight of it. Um, I'm not sure who it was. It might... It might have been Mario Man. Yeah, I was about to say, I think 
It could be Mario Moon. He sounds like the kind of person that would happen to. Opie Opie. And now we're gonna see our good friend Gobblegut again on Candle Up's end. So maybe Candle will have a chance to redeem himself. Well, I messed up the first phase this time. But that's okay. Yeah, the first phase is actually the easier of the two phases, IMO. Yeah. And it's a less punishing one, because if you miss that bulge, you can just get it again easily like that. Okay, so I messed up and still did vulnerable letter off. I am actually very surprised. Oh, that's not good. Okay. So I, I missed got really the bulge again on the second phase. But it's okay because I didn't get hit, so I could just do that. And again, if he hits you, it loses a lot more time because he starts that cycle over. So I just messed up in different ways this time. So if you just combine both the fights and only take the good parts from each, then I had a perfect gobblegut fight. Or if you just watch what I do, Kipo. Oh yeah, just watch it. So now we're done with Worlds 1 and 2 for the rest of the run, and we're going to be doing World 5, where you don't get too many stars from there, but you get a few interesting ones. So let's see if I have finally decided to embarrass myself on this guy. Even though I'm, I, I don't like to brag about myself, but I do. I like to think I'm a good gobble god. All right. So that's the first phase is done. All right. Guy is the easiest boss ever. So I just got two for two perfect gobble gut. Nice. That might, again, that's another one of those things where that might look easy, but we've practiced this game quite a bit, and so we just kind of have to know what's coming. Whoa, that was a two second gold on Space Storm 1. And my sum of best is sub 3 now. Yeah, I was actually going to ask earlier, like, when sub 3 sum of best? Because I didn't know if you got it during your last run. Yeah, after last run, I had a 30003. Yeah. So we're both kind of close to a sub 3 sum of best. He has, he just got sub 3 sum of best, but I have like a 300. I have a 3031 because I forgot to save my golds from last night's race. But I would have a 3028. We're not world record contenders, by the way. Like, not even close yet. Yeah, the top of the Galaxy 2 leaderboard is really spread out. So, like, we're third and fourth place, but that's still far from world record. Yeah, I have a 307, he has a 309, but we're both capable of, like, right now I think we're both capable of, like, low 305, maybe 304. <laughs> sub 3, we don't know, we don't know about sub 3 in this game, honestly. Like, it would take a, a serious grind to get that, but in a game this long, I don't know if that's worth it. Alright, tell me if you get an optimal Space Storm 2. No, it's very bad. 
Come on. Crap. I keep getting this ledge thing. There. That's really annoying. What happened? Um, when you're doing the triple jump, like, I kept getting the little ledge climb thing at the start, so I couldn't double jump. Ah. Uh. I had a really good Space Storm one as well. Oh, you're catching up. Yeah, I'm up probably around an entire segment behind you. No. I'm probably around two minutes behind. You're way more consistent at late game than me, though, so it's still likely you will catch up to me. Yeah, we, we, we've had races where Cantaloupe's like at least a minute ahead after World 3, but I slowly start gaining. It's very easy to make big mistakes in the late game of SMG2, as I have proven in the past. Actually, as both of us have proven in the past. Like, you can be... I've had two runs on low 305 pace going into World 6, both die in World 6. Um, because of three minute time losses on a single star. Alright, so now let's see if I get in a good Space Storm 2 here. I didn't get wrecked by the amp, so we're off to a good start. Thanks. Oh, by the way, you can guess for what points Candle's gonna get on Sherburn Secret now. Oh yeah, this time it's the same game, but I have to get at least 600. So you see the switches, you're supposed to hit those to slow down time, but we don't have to do any of that. Also, I got a perfect Space Storm too. Nice. I'm starting to close the gap. I'm pretty sure I can't suck three times. But I can still, We break, I think we could definitely still, I can definitely still. 690 wall I just went into the pipe thinking did I forget a star from Space Storm and then I'm like okay yeah. shouts to Valor who forgot to do Space Storm 2 in his AGDQ run okay by the way I'm the one who saved the run and figured out what star he was missing OP OP yeah Shouts to Cantaloupe, the legend who found the honey skips up. <laughs> and shoutouts to my nunchuck, because it apparently decided to stop working for a second. I really need a new nunchuck. Oh well, I mean, so far this run I haven't had a, I tried to long jump, but instead I got a normal jump scenario happen. Oh yeah, so this is a big skip I'm doing right now. I can just. I got skip. the same RNG twice in a row. I got downright RNG. Nice. Whoa. Uh. Okay. What happened? Um. I took damage. On the lava planet. I'm just gonna play this safe yeah. and use the platform to get the metal. Um. Normally, you don't take damage until you get the common metal and then ground pound from it and boost back up. But since I was already at one health, I can do that. Also, I need another health here. Two for two with beating you, I got 740. Oh. I also somehow did not get a homing ground pound off the monkey. Okay. Or I'm sorry, the chimp. His name is oh. just the chimp. I don't know why. So in this boss fight here, um, he's going to shoot fireballs and coconuts at me, and you need to use the coconuts to damage him. And I'm going to intentionally not hit back this first coconut. 
on. There. It's because slower, but easier. And yeah. way more consistent. This There's a special type of attack he does, where he shoots a bunch of fireballs and a couple coconuts up in the air. And you can use that to make the fight faster, but it's very random. And I... And this way of doing it and avoiding that attack uh, only loses a small amount of time. So I do it this way. Yeah, we. I started doing it and then he switched yeah. because he realized how consistent it is. And also, another skip we do um, on this planet, this ice planet, is you're supposed to kill, fire all the coconuts back at the these uh, crab enemies, whatever they are. But you can just long jump past them because, once again, Nintendo didn't realize that you can jump in this game. Also, fun fact, that big skip at the beginning of the level was found by Tollful31. Yeah, the DK, the DKR god found a skip in this game. He was actually contributed to this game's success. Oh, I missed the coconut. Rip. Rip run. There we go. Wait, are you memeing about the first coconut, or did you accidentally miss another one? I'm memeing. Oh, okay. I was memeing. We got 44 viewers right now, and I've seen this marathon climb up to like 300. Mm -hmm. Oh, crap. I got. I hit a fireball and couldn't make the third hit. Let's see if I get this. I got super lucky there. Wow. <laughs> okay. So what just happened is that's what Candlelock was talking about with how you can get lucky and sometimes get a coconut from that uh, third phase, from that upwards firing attack and hit him with it. I got super lucky there. All right. So now Candlelock's in Upside Dizzy, which is kind of the sequel level to... Um, right side down. Yeah, it's right side down. I had to think for a second. And it's another really movement intensive stage. Oh, another gold. I'm golding like everything. Nice. Are they big golds though, or just like maybe a second or two? Uh, it's a three second, then a two second, and now a point eight second. Yeah. So. They're like reasonable golds. Now we're pretty much on the same split, but I'm starting it as you're finishing it. Which is like I, like I said earlier, anything can happen in this game. And this first room has some really cool movement. It's some of my favorite movement in the entire game. Because yeah, you just kind of long jump, and for whatever reason, you go really high. Uh-oh. All right. Goomba. Uh, that did not work. So I'm going to wait for this Goomba to come down again while I'm at it. Awesome. Ah, I messed that up. You can get in that pipe early, but it's really finicky. This is like the most awkward hallway in the history of speedrunning. Okay, that exact same thing happened to me in my 246 relay run. That was an interesting Upside Dizzy one. Yeah. 
All right, so now I'm going to do the secret star, which as you just saw from Candle Screen, is basically the same as the secret star in Right Side Down. It's just a box mini game. We have to burn them up. An interesting thing about the fireballs in this game is that they don't actually come from Mario's center. They come from his right hand. So, attention to detail, I guess. Although that does make aiming them a little bit harder. Once again, hi Luigi and bye Luigi. So let's see. This is actually easier to do optimally than the first box mini game because you don't have nearly as many awkward angles to throw at, and the boxes are a bit more tightly packed together. I got an eight, but I barely missed a nine. Right now, Cantaloupe's in Boom Moon, which is another somewhat uninteresting level. At least this first star is. Because yeah. it's pretty much an auto-scroller. The next star that I'm doing after this in Boo Moon has an interesting skip in it, though. Yeah. And it's actually a skip that was found in, like, late 2015, so it's... For this game, it's pretty recent. Probably the most recent, like, major skip. Actually, I'm pretty sure that skip was found before Purple Idiot Skip. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Purple Idiot Skip. <laughs> What's Purple Idiot Skip, you might ask? You'll find out. Yeah. It's the hardest skip ever. So, Candle just did a skip on the final part of Boom and Secret where you just long jump to the star. That's actually easier than doing that star the intended way. Mm -hmm. Got another jump cancel. I've been getting a lot of jump cancels. I actually do a different strat here than what a lot of runners do. Most runners long jump to that set, set of snake blocks and then activate the checkpoint, but they long jump a lot later. I actually long jump straight from here to the checkpoint. And I don't know if there's a time difference, but I just like that method better. Spin there just on the safe side. Alright, so right here is a skip I'm going to do. I activated the next area. I'm going to come up here and gravity switches, and then I long jump straight to the slot star. Did you get it first try, idiot? Yep. Cool. In the practice race I did with Viper, I failed that trick multiple times, even though it's not that hard of a trick. Yeah. It's kind of weird, because you have to adjust your angle at several different points. But thankfully, the setup we have for it is really lenient and really consistent. Okay. I just realized I haven't been keeping track of Comet Medals, but I'm good on them. Can you still sub to 30 World 5? Um, I'm almost certain I can't. Yeah, I can. Alright. I don't think I can. I've lost too much time. I can probably get like a 310 if this run stays going pretty well. But again, I haven't been comparing to my splits since Yoshi Star 1. Actually, I haven't been comparing to them since Chomp Works 1. I checked briefly during Chomp Works. Dropping frames, it looks like. Don't die. Okay. My PB had a hilarious death to that jump. 
where I died, but as I was sinking in the quicksand, I actually got the checkpoint. So now I'm going to attempt a uh, boom and one skip. Easy. So right now, Candle's going to be attempting Shiverburn Comet. Um, you might be wondering if it's faster to have Rainbow Mario or um, just Skate. But the thing is, there isn't actually a time difference. Um, so it's easier to turn with running, however. So what he's going to do is he's going to... He's going to skate to build up some momentum, and then uh, that's and then from there he's going to just run. Yeah. So skating, um, you get to max speed instantly, but it's a lot harder to turn. So we start skating and then jump to start running, and then we can turn easily and we're already at max speed. And the reason why Boomerang 1 wasn't in the any percent route for a while, because it is a relatively fast star, even without the skip, but it's because of this male toad letter. Yeah. So only once the skip was found was it fast enough. And it replaces the super massive secret star, which is kind of a breather because now we don't have to do that star. It's very irritating. So now Cantaloupe's off to Bowser Jr.'s Boom Bunker, which is the final Bowser Jr. level. The thing about Boom Bunker is that it involves cannon shots, and cannon shots kind of suck. Because they're like the only thing in SMG2 any percent that require the use of like actually using the balls. Because there's no rolling ball stages or fluzzard in this category. So really the only major use of motion control is, is those cannon shots. I'm gonna see what my best possible. Because... Oh wow, I'm I can probably still finish within 10 minutes of my summer best. I don't think I will, but I can. Alright. So now Canop's on Boomsday, which is the boss that will either make you or itself look like a joke. Yeah. There is no in between whatsoever. Shouts to the Oh My Dog. Is that a dog? So yeah, the two cannon shots we have to do in this level are pretty precise. Like for instance, this one we have a very small target to aim at. That boomerang bros face. So I aimed that cannon shot at the cloud and I fired just as the platform was moving out from underneath the cloud which lines it up perfectly. I'm gonna try another frame perfect ground pound here. All right, I got it. I've been getting a lot of frame perfect stuff this run.
All right, so now Cantaloupe's done with World 5, and we're going to be moving on to World 6, the final world in the game. Oh my god, I am getting so much frame perfect tricks this round, yet I'm failing all the easy stuff. World 6 is by far the longest world part of any percent, by the way. We spend around 40 minutes in there. Yeah, because not only do we have to do all the stars we want in World 6, we also clean up the rest of the stars from comets and stuff. Early levels. Yeah, and Galaxy Generator, the final level, is around 8 minutes. Or at least the segment is. I am still less than 10 minutes behind my summit best, but just barely. I am plus 953 on my summit best after World 5. This run is great. Oh yeah, and this next star after this, um, Melty Monster 1, sucks. I hate it. It's actually I just hate really it. fun level. It's a fun level, it's just terrible to do optimally. Because it's one small mistake and you're done, basically. Yeah. This is actually another uh, level where health management is important. Like, pretty much every lava level. Like It's funny though, because the galaxy is named Melty Monster and this is the only lava level in it. Yeah, the tornadoes you see on the first, on the huge planet with all the lava, um, those are on a global cycle, so um, they're it's pretty hard to make that stuff cool. And the last set of planets is just no. I golded this level by a second in the race we did earlier, and I just golded it by a second again. Wow. Quit making it hard on me. Watch, I'm gonna get my first ever sub-130 multi monster one now. I just realized that I don't ever go for a jump cancel multi monster and one, and I definitely should. So I'd like to shout out Valu's AGDQ run for this movement, because I, I think it looks somewhat cool. Because you like long jump into the checkpoint, and you go flying into the lava. This part's the hard part for me. Went well. Yeah, this tornado cycle is hard to make. And then getting up here without hitting the lava again. It's also a little bit annoying. This next long jump I'm about to do is also a little finicky, but I've recently figured out how to do it. So yeah, you just kind of go around all the planets there. Just kind of get out of my way. gonna hit me but it doesn't matter because I can land on the planet to the left of me and then long jump straight to the star. That was a really good Melty Monster one. That probably would have been a gold if I were if I bothered with splitting. I'll probably retime this run after just to make sure I didn't get any golds. I got a 12960 that would have been a gold if I were splitting. I got my first ever sub-30 Melty Monster 1 in a marathon, Unreal. I don't remember what my AL time was, I wasn't looking at it. Should check Yeah, I don't out. remember a lot of them. Yeah. 
So shouts to Melty Monster Secret for having a strat that would save a lot of time, but no. You mean the so, rock you, double jumps? Yeah, basically there's a glitch in this game where if you do a jump with Rock Mario and then time a spin and a jump at the exact same time, then you can get an extra jump in midair. And you can do this for an infinite amount of times. And on Melty Monster Secret, you can use this to basically skip the ramps on every single one of those ramps. And nice back close Mario. And then you can continue rolling because you didn't take the ramp. And it can save a lot of time, but it's very difficult to do it without dying. It's not worth it. And I guess while we're on the subject of mid-air rock jumps, there's a skip you can do with them in Freezy Flake 2 that would save around a minute if it were RTA viable. Yeah, you have to do a ton of them in a row, though, so... It's that's... humanly possible. Humans have done it, but... Yeah. yeah. Like, grinding for so that's... a really long time and then getting lucky once. It's very unlikely it will ever be an RTA. So yeah, this bowling minigame is pretty self-explanatory. And I believe the Star Candle is doing this the last time we're going to see uh, Rock Mario also. Okay. Wow, I barely got 5,000 pins. You got zigzag skip? Yeah, um, I kept rolling under the star though, so I had to break my rock. That's... That happened to me in my VGDQ. Oh yeah, Melty Monster 2 is also the level you can grind star bits on if you ever need to do that. Shouts to eighteen twelve. Oh, my dog. Can we get some Oh My Dogs in the chat for this amazing game? So the thing about Melty Monster 2 is that once you take these ramps, it's basically an auto-scroller. Um, there's nothing you can really do to speed it up. But... So here comes my attempt at zigzag skip. This actually, this might look, it, it honestly looks harder than it does. All right. And also what you saw me do on the ramp is a mid-air rock jump. I do it for funsies. And now Candle's on Clockwork Ruin Secret. And as you learned in the practice race we did last night, this is a star where you do not want to die. Because the cycles are terrible if you do. Also, you do lose all your coins if you die, so... Unlike Star Bits. Yeah. So you have to start collecting them over again. So basically, yeah, this star, it might seem like it takes forever to collect these 30 coins, but once you do, the star is basically done because you can just do a triple jump wall kick to skip the entire last planet. I failed it though. So, just doing wow. that. Okay, I think I'm gonna barely make this cycle. Yeah, I'm fine. The route I do, optimally, you only have to get one coin from the third gear. And I think the route with the route Cantaloupe does, you can optimally, you can actually not have to get the third gear at all, but it's very hard. Let's see if I get this triple jump. Yeah, lit.
So I'm actually low on star bits, so I'm going to have to collect some from this level. Are you as low as you were last time or now? No. I'm going to be good after this level. So yeah, Cantaloupe all of a sudden is now playing Super Mario 64, so we're going to be giving our best cheese of five impersonation. I did not fail the triple jump wall kick. In fact, I had a really good pucker ruins. Shouts to Cantaloupe for being the non banged toad world record holder in this game. Best category. off to throwback so yeah throwback is a recreation of womp's fortress from super mario 64 there's a lot of cool stuff in here um this first star is basically a recreation of the first star from womp's fortress in sm64 and it, the comet metal is actually in the same spot where the shoot into the wild blue star was in sm64 so that's a really nice guy also anybody who knows me knows that i do not have fond memories of this level um, earlier, I mentioned that I had a uh, 305 pace once die to two and taunt two different instances through parts in World 6. This star is one of those. Because I died on King Womp not once, but twice. It's actually. Would you consider that a race between us, Cantaloupe, even though, like, we started at different times? Uh, not really. I don't know. It was for a 246 relay race both Cantaloupe and I participated in. Oh, that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah, that would be a race, I think. Yeah. Yes. I still managed to get a 309.17 that run. Alright. So here's Wom King. Unlike in SM64, you can't ground pound to clutch through him. So you have to fight him as intended. And these wimples, I swear to God, these wimples. They suck. Okay, I don't know how I did not get hit by that one. All right, this is where, this is the hard part of the fight. And that high jump there is just some kind of something cool you can do. Doesn't like save time or anything. Yeah, that went really well. I didn't better than dying twice. So now we're going to do Throwback 2. The thing about Throwback 2 is they could have done something creative with, like, the Silver Stars. They could have, like, put them in red coin positions, but no, they just kind of threw them around the level and then added Pod Mario. It's kind of disappointing. But the movement is really This is actually going to be a star where I'm not going to go for a jump cancel. I mean, I'm going to press A just to see if I get one, but I'm not going to mash to go for it because it's actually easier. I actually find it easier to not get a jump cancel because there's a long jump I go for off this bottom, buddy. That's fine. I have to wait here anyways for this.
back-to-back -back abuse of the Plaza momentum to gain some cool height. Oh yeah, we should probably mention we ground pound when we want to fall a really large distance because Mario falls the fastest when ground pound. Yeah, it's in Galaxy and Galaxy 2, it's a lot faster than in the other games before it. Yeah. How fast is a ground pound in Odyssey, assuming they're um, I don't remember exactly. Probably like in between Galaxy and the other games. So now we're heading off to Flash Black because we choose to go the bottom route for any percent, even in no bank toad, at least Cantaloupe and I do, because the top route involves going through a galaxy known as Battle Belts. And the thing about Battle Belt is it's a creative idea, but it's really... It's, a word out. it's just not good enough for a speedrun. It's not interesting, and it's kind of slow. And then it's also a little difficult. So we just opt to do the bottom route because the stars here are actually somewhat fast. So in flash black, as you can see, the lights kind of flash on and off every few seconds. But again, once we're speedrunners, we know where everything is, so we kind of have our own routes. Again, with the jump cancels. Hoping this Guma doesn't wreck me. It did not. Okay, that's fine. I wouldn't have needed to wait for that Guma anyways. Alright, this movement, if I pull it off, will look really cool. Right. I actually meant to keep Yoshi there, so that way I could get back on him, jump back, jump off, bounce off that um, pumpkin Goomba, and then dismount into the launch star, and it would have looked really cool. That works fine as well. This last part's pretty basic. Alright. That went really well. Who's, all right, who's ready to spam some resident sleepers in the chat? Who's ready to go to sleep? Because you can pretty much do that for the next three minutes. This next level is not interesting at all. Um, it's literally, you spend like, I don't know, 10 seconds to get to a shell, and then you basically use a shell for two minutes straight. This is probably the most boring level in SMP 20%. And if you're wondering why we do this slow level, it's like Viper said earlier, it's because we have to do it to get through the bottom route because the top route has Battle Belt. It's, I think Slimy Spring 1 is still faster than Battle Belt 1, at least as Mario. Because I don't know what strats you can do with Mario that are RTA viable and fast. Alright, I'm 3 for 3 on slow boosts. Actually, I think I might technically be 4 for 4, because I don't know if I got it both times in right side down 1. So that's the last common metal we'll be collecting for the run. Um, because now we'll have 32, which is enough to unlock the gravity gauntlet common. And that's the highest number of common, that's the common with the highest number of common metals required.
All right, so I'm going to try to do this part coinless, which is going to mean I have to um, basically go through these rings without touching these coins. Um, let's see if I can do it here. Their hitboxes are kind of big because of the bubbles, but thankfully I made it through all right. All right, so I'm going to go for something kind of cool here. That if I get it, you're going to probably... I'm going to... I want to see some pock champs in the chat for this jump. About to attempt. What, you're about to attempt to jump? Let me do it here. Their hitboxes are... Um, I just... I did the jump out of the water and then through the shell in midair to unlock the <laughs> treasure chest. I, I just pulled too. that off. Yeah, and if you miss that, there's literally a shell, like, three feet away. All right, so that's the last star we're actually going to be collecting from World 6 until Bowser's Galaxy Generator. The last uh, six stars are all going to be comets. We're going to be collecting... Well, they're going to be comets, but we do still get a couple comets from World 6. Oh, well, yeah. Not bad. That's the last normal star we'll be getting. The last six stars are all going to be comets. And there's two from World 3, two from World 4, two from World 6. Apparently, we don't really. There's no comments in World 5 worth backtracking for. So, this first one is Honey Hall's Comet, and this is the comet we need to have at this point in order to be able to unlock um, Beat Block and Gravity Gauntlet's comets because they're not going to spawn unless there's an extra star in between when we collect the 30 second Comet Medal. And it's really complicated to explain. I don't know if I could explain it in the time we have. Basically, comets unlock are unlocked in the order that from least amount of combo that's required to most. And Throwback and Flash Black get a chance to unlock way before Beat Block and uh, Gravity Gauntlet do. So we have to have a start in between so that we can give them a bit of. Also, the star is basically the last half of Bonnie Halls, too, but with Cosmic Clones, it's still a bunch of long jumps. Star Cantaloupe's about to do Beat Block Comet is actually kind of an interesting case because it says that it's in double time, but the thing is, on the first star, the blocks switch every eight beats of the song. On the second star, they switch every other beat, so it's actually four times as fast. It's hilarious. And the game doesn't even show you the full speed in the uh, um, cutscene before you start. Like the showing, like showing what you're in for cutscene. Yeah, it's another really cycle-based star. Okay, I messed up at the end there, but I didn't die or anything. Mm, okay. Doing that level optimally and getting the fastest cycle is really difficult. Yeah, I don't know if I don't think I do it the fastest way, but I do it one of the more consistent ways. All right, that next star, by the way, might be the the deciding factor between us. Well, this is right. one of the few stars late game that I'm actually more consistent than Super Viper at. Well, I'm getting consistency out of it. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. um, you saw me do this skip earlier in the run after I failed behind the castle as a backup. But now, since we don't need the common metal, we just do this skip normally. Alright, I had a really good beat block comment. I recently started doing a strat where I actually skipped the checkpoint after the infinite flutter. By the way, that infinite flutter, for whatever reason, you get Yoshi in this stage, so why the heck not? I think I'm still on 310 pace. Alright, so basically how the skip works is when you hit a lava wall and then uh, hit the lava again, rather than getting boosted vertically, you get boosted horizontally. And 
that's that gives you a lot of momentum. I failed the skip. Oh dang! I might actually have a chance now. I'm about to select the star. I just selected it. There's probably around a. Dude, there's like a 30 second gap between us. This race could potentially end really close. So yeah, you have to do specific movements in the air. Otherwise, um, you're not going to land in the way you need to. And also, if you land too far to the left side of that platform, you just fall through it after bouncing. It's kind of weird. It's That happened to me three times in a row on 305 pace. All right. Like, I, like Handel said, he is a bit more consistent at this than I am, so we'll see how this goes for me. Easiest skip of the, in the entire game. Dang. For the record, you have to switch from holding right to left, then to up left at very specific intervals. Uh, Mario, turn around. All right, and the last, the next two stars are relatively simple. Like, for example, this next star is probably the easiest star in any percent. Just because there's literally no way you can fail it. So basically, there's a bunch of purple coins, as you can see, but there is way more than 100 of them. Oh wow, I missed like 88 already. Yeah, optimally, you don't really want to miss any, because there's a small time saver you can do on this star if you don't miss that many. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of a shortcut here. Okay, that could have gone a bit worse. I think I've only lost 20 seconds to my sum of best so far in World 6. Well, this is actually really good. So yeah, optimally you miss less coins, and you're able to get a slight more of an advantage from doing that cut, but it's overall not too bad. Alright, this next star throwback 2 is literally the exact same as throwback, uh, throwback comment, it's the exact same as throwback 2. See, I confuse them because of how similar they are. The one difference is that this cycle at the start is harder to make on throwback comment. Yeah, but yeah, other than that, it. the movement is pretty much the same. I nearly missed the second silver star. Oh, yeah. Whenever you're Cloud Mario and you're long jumping over a bottomless pit like that, you kind of gain speed while you're in midair. So I'm stupid. Yeah, and it only happens when you jump from near the middle of the cloud. So, uh, if you're trying to do one of those skips where you go over a large area with clouds, don't run all the way to the edges of the cloud. You want to jump from the middle of them. Shoutouts to Nintendo, they're so good at making games. Hey Shigeru Miyamoto, if you want to learn how to actually program games properly, hit me up. Depo. Alright, 
So now we have one star left, and I actually like this star. I think it's very anticlimactic. Um, it's a very anticlimactic way of ending the... Okay, it's actually kind of climactic. It involves a skill that uh, not and no other star in this game requires you to use, and that's multitasking. Um, multitasking with the pointer. Yeah, you have to keep an eye on Mario, you have to keep an eye on the enemies. Because we're going to be collecting a lot of star bits and shooting them at enemies to stun them and then kick them. You have to be keeping track of a lot of things. Um, and obviously, there's just so much, and it's really interesting, and it's really satisfying to do well on this level. Yeah, you have to collect star bits, shoot star bits, and control Mario at the same time. I died. Oh, this race is about to get interesting. <laughs> How many did you have? Uh, I was, like, pretty close to the end. I don't know, I was over halfway through. I'm ahead for the first time since Yoshi Star One. Have you? Did you? You? You, you need to realize that, Cantaloupe. Yeah. All right. Here we go. So now it's time for the hardest skip in the run. I don't know if I can do it, Cantaloupe. Please fail it. I want to catch back up. I don't know. I might. So hard, man. You should fail it to show off the cutscene. Keep up. Nah. So yeah, um, basically, I'm gonna try to skip this cutscene. It's really hard. I got it. Wow, Pog Champ. Everyone, type Pog Champ in chat, please. <laughs> Shots to on me, Murder, for finding that. Basically, it's the biggest meme skip in the game. Basically, all you do is you click on the Bowser's Oxygen Generator space with the Wii Remote instead of moving there with the Nunchuck. And you'll just move, and you just skip the cutscene. It saves like thirty-five seconds, and it took way too long to find. It was yeah. discovered in like late, late twenty fifteen. It's just that there's a cutscene trigger on that space in between, so you just move over it by pointing. And that's all there is to the skip. All right. Bowser's Gacha Generator is, in my opinion, one of the best levels to end off uh, a run like this. It's a really cool level. There's a lot of new tricks, like this lava boost here. And now I'm gonna do this. So I take damage there intentionally because I wanna lose the drill, because that'll allow me to long jump, and also I could spin after jumping if I need to. This section can be a little finicky fickle. Like, it's possible to make a small mistake and have a small amount of time loss. Don't go for a claw cancel. Okay. Coming up is the coolest infinite flutter in the any percent by far. Like, no questions asked. This is easily my favorite infinite flutter. Because it just looks so cool. Basically, I'm going to get on Yoshi and infinite flutter straight to the end of the level. Be really careful with my high here. If I go too high, I'll soft lock. All right. So I made the top platform here, which is optimal. Um, that requires a really good flutter and a really late dismount. But it's not too hard to make. All 
All right, and with that, I am on to the final Bowser fight. So this fight is very similar to the fight in um, uh, Gravity Gauntlet in that we're gonna go for punch cancels and the um, me and the meteors have shock waves coming off of them, and so do Bowser's punches. But also, Bowser's a lot quicker to pull out his punches in this fight. And in addition to that, um, he also will shoot three meteors instead of the two he shot in Gravity Gauntlet. Okay, I just started the Bowser cutscene. I got top floor two, by the way. Nice. I Bowser just punched for the first time. Okay, I'm gonna try to make sure I keep Bowser far away from these meteors. All right. I think that should punch cancel. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Okay. So now we just kind of have to work. Now the only thing that can really go wrong is I could miss a hit, which, as I said earlier, is around 20 seconds every single time you do. So let's hope that doesn't happen. No, let's hope it does happen. Oh, God. Huh. Okay, I barely made hit number three. Not only did I get to the meteor... Oh, but yeah, that's bad. Oh, you so what just happened? Cancel. Yeah. Yeah, I just got the cancel. So what That's... just happened is now I have to wait an additional meteor cycle. I technically didn't miss a hit, but yeah, that's like it's almost bad. as bad as missing a hit. Okay. I just. I wish you get to hear more of this awesome song. I wish you get to hear more of this song, except it sounds better with the choir and the drums. Can you tell me exactly when you get the fourth hit? Because I'm curious about who's ahead now. I just got it. Okay, you're still ahead by quite a bit then. Yeah. So that's it. That's the end of the game. Time's coming up pretty soon, by the way. <laughs> I just missed the fourth hit. Oh, rip. So, uh, yeah, well, as soon as I touch the grand star, get ready on time. Look at it. So beautiful. Alright, get ready. Don't actually stop time here by the way and <gasps> wait a second he's back plot twist okay yeah by the way this final fight is actually ridiculously easy i almost pressed time <laughs> lol all right so yeah there's like literally no way you can die in this fight <laughs> and it's super short you literally just press a and z four times Unless you're bad and miss a hit, in which case you're going to have to press it more than four times. Alright. Alright. There we go. That's... That's hit, number f that's hit number four, and that's it for... Okay, so time's going to be when I uh, touch the Grand Star, so get ready for that. I, I just have a small cutscene to go through, and then one more long jump. This is still a 310. Oh my god. I lost three minutes to the Yoshi Star 1, and I still finished a, with a 310. I'm actually amazed with myself. Nice. I'm also, can up, I'm actually surprised I got first. I don't know how I did. Okay, get ready for time on my mark. And time. All right. According to my splits, I got three ten forty. Did I miss time? Uh, you might have. I don't know. 
I you just said it. time. My bad. I got, I got three ten forty. I think you started your timer a little bit early. Nice. Uh, I got three eleven oh nine. Nice. GG, dude. That was a really good race. Really, really good race. All right, so that's Super Mario Galaxy 2. Um, follow Cantaloupe because he's awesome, and follow me because I'm awesomer. Kappa. Keepa. Also, follow Keepa. Valu 111, world record holder. Even though he doesn't play Galaxy anymore? Okay, I'm officially making an announcement. I'm not doing Yoshi Star 1 Flutter until I get 305. Wow. I'm not going to deal with that BS again. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're probably not going to be able to get to the credits, but thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that race. It got really exciting near the end. If only I could get... Dude, I got a 39-16 World 6. If only I could get that good of a World 6 in, like, an actual good run. Okay. So...